Hey, Mike. Good morning. How are you? I think Wiggy's very good looking. Uh, That's right. <laughs> See? I'm not afraid it, to say it. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it's a, And yes. speaking of earlier on the show, Mike, Wiggy made it clear the shoe is the first sign of a felon. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah. obviously yeah. acted that out. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> guilty as charged. Guilty, guilty as charged. Well, um, were you disappointed with this road trip for the Boston Bruins, Mike Bilbrey? It's it's hard not to be disappointed if you're a fan of this team. They um, lost leads late. They uh, had guys that were missing meetings, which is not a good sign. And they gave up a, a bunch of quality. Ch- they gave up a lot of quality chances, and they've been leaning on their goaltenders. As a, you just you don't have to know the stats; you just watch the game, and you'll see they give up a whole ton of quality chances. And the goaltenders have been bailing them out, but not not enough to get them in the win column. Just enough to get them to overtime, where they haven't been very successful. You've been around the game for a long time as a player and a coach and a GM. Uh, is when a team is blowing consistently or repeatedly third period leads what does that say to you about that hockey club i think it probably says that there's you know well first of all i think it's pretty clear now with lindholm out with greslick out with forbert you know in and out of the lineup and not a hundred percent when he's in the lineup that that their defense needs some shoring up and uh they need to have some confidence and go after it i i, I saw where the coach had mentioned that he needs his team to be a lot more aggressive in the later stages of the game. And it really is death if you start to sit back and let the play come to you. Uh, when you have a one-goal lead, you have, to, you have to get after it. You have to try to strike aggressively and offensively. And if you, but if you sit back, uh, you're inviting danger. Mike, Jake DeBrusque told media that he hasn't had any uh, conversations with the Bruins about any type of extension yet. Uh, as we get closer to March 8th, what would you do with Jake DeBrusque? Do you think that his underperformance has uh, dealt him uh, the cards that he has right now? I think he's put himself in the mix of trade bait. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to be able to keep – we've talked about this a lot, and I don't want to go down this hole too much, but I, I – Allmark is a guy that has one more year on his contract. It's a lot safer to trade a guy like him now and DeBrusque with, you know, with some youth on his side. Those two guys are the chips that you'd have to dangle. Now, can they make something happen with those two chips? I'm not 100% sure, but it's, it's pretty clear to me that if they haven't really had any serious discussion or made any serious movement towards a contract extension, extension for DeBrusque, that they probably are not thinking that he's worth what I guess he's making four million now. Is mm-hmm. he going to ask for six million or six and a half million? Is an unrestricted free agent? He's got some leverage. Uh, I got to think that those two guys are the chips that they can dangle. They don't have enough in terms of draft picks. They they have all sorts of money concerns in terms of the cap. Uh, not a lot of people in the pipeline that are are going to dangle in front of somebody and and get some real return so those are the two guys if you're going to make a major change um would be i think the the pieces that that you could move in and probably get some interest when we say major change can you get a significant impact player based on your restrictions salary cap wise you know well between the two of those guys that we just talked about, that's about nine. I think about nine million dollars, and so you could free up some, some, some cash in that regard. But the question is, um, wh- the goalie market's a weird market. You know, you never know what people are thinking, and they're always looking to find a goaltender that comes out of the blue. But you got a young player like DeBrusque, who, if you think you can make him uh, consistently a, a top six forward, is a, is an interesting piece. So. I think that those guys would be, for me, the people that I would shop around and see what comes of it. Maybe nothing. And, again, we look at the standings, and despite the fact that they you know, they won one game on the road trip, um, they picked up points in a bunch of games and, and uh, are still right at the top of the Eastern Conference pack. So um, they could sit tight and see what happens with it. Or, But I think in that case – you're looking at DeBrusque as a totally free agent and, and maybe walking out the door without anything in return. 
That's another concern, not just that you want to shore up your team, but you don't want to give up an asset and get nothing, nothing back for it. Mike, you talked about the aggressiveness in games, especially like if you have a goal lead. And I would imagine that it's on the coach that is really the message deliverer. And when you have, you know, goalies that are playing really well, maybe you get into this this comfort zone of not wanting to be aggressive. What does Montgomery need to do as a coach to say, okay, I have to break that kind of um, – I have to break away from that, even though I know I got good goalies trying to protect leads, where I have to be a little bit more aggressive to grow leads. What does that message have to be for himself when he looks himself in the mirror as a coach? You know what? He mentioned it uh, a few days ago that perhaps he was going to the same well a little too often. Um, when you start using your top line or top two lines too frequently, you're almost inviting a lack of confidence among the, the lower six forwards. You know, he's got a he's got a trust in his third and fourth lines to get out there. I mean they're only playing twelve minutes a game and that's that's they should have plenty in the tank to be able to go after it off uh, offensively late late stages of the game. Not recklessly, but you know, I think most third and fourth lines are pretty responsible and I think that's the case here and I think he's gotta employ them more often so that they have you know, they've got energy in the tank and let let's use it. Don't don't rely on the top six forwards as frequently as, as he's told me that he's he's been doing, give those guys in the back end some confidence and the chance to prove that they belong. Mike, the other day, Kevin Paul DuPont reported that the Bruins are increasing ticket prices 10% across the board in what they call the blended increase. How? It's my belief that they keep pricing out fans. I don't know. Obviously, that's the way of the world. I love capitalism, but... What do you make of the uh, the latest price increase from the uh, Boston Bruins? Well, it doesn't surprise you, does it? I mean, if they can get it, they're going to ask for it. A ten percent is a pretty good whack. I mean, it's everything else is going up exponentially. I guess they can charge this, and I, I think they have. I don't know how many sellouts they've had over the last ten years. I mean, almost every game has been a sellout, so it's not like the market's not there, but it's um, you know. Ten percent is ten percent, and it's a, it's a lot. But that's this this ownership group has proven in the past that they if they can get it, they'll they'll ask for it. And so ten percent doesn't doesn't shock me. Although in this day and age, it seems like an, a a big ask. Shime, I don't know if Mike heard your lead or not, but uh, did, you, did you catch Shime's lead? I know I didn't. I you, didn't. Sorry. Um, yeah. It's fine. Uh, so, sometimes you come right at him, and I know that you that you uh, that you disagree. But uh, he, Shime, you're essentially saying this is a rebuild year. Stand pat and do nothing, and uh, get yourself to next season. Well, yeah, right? it's 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 a reset year. I don't like necessarily like the word rebuild because I think rebuild is a multi year thing. So reset year in that like you need to reset your cap space, and you're re- right up against it right now. So it makes it difficult to make moves. You don't have a first round pick to move as well. So you're really kind of lacking in the whole trade capital outside of the goalie, which, as Mike pointed out, is a fluctuating market. So to me, it's a you know, Sweeney has been aggressive at other deadlines. This isn't a time to be aggressive. It's a time to kind of reset and and prepare for the off season, and then really kind of send it in uh, 2024, 25. Shime's so a wave, he's a wave the white flag. Yeah, he's he's a wave the white. No, what, you can't wave the white flag. That's not acceptable. <laughs> I'm, it's but not a wave the you, white flag you, thing. It's it's. It's hope that these guys continue to play above expectation because if they don't, then the the aggressive trade is pointless anyways. Okay, tell me what you're going to do with Jake DeBrus. Are you going to sign him to a five-year contract at $6 million? Or are you no. Going to, no, okay, so so then you have to move him, don't you? You have to get something for this asset. Sure. And the like, same's true with Allmark. One year away from total free agency, and and he's got some value. Won the Vezina Trophy last year. I think you got to go shopping these guys big time. But there's beyond those two people, there's not much, there's not much in the cupboard. Sure, and and with Olmark, you like you said, you have a little time there, so you could always theoretically move him in the off season or halfway through next season. And with DeBrusque, I mean, yeah, you can move him, but what are you going to get in return for just Jake DeBrusque? Again, you don't have the draft capital to get something better than Jake DeBrusque in return. You could get an asset that's about equal, but I, I don't really know what that does for you. Or you can get a draft pick, and then you're a seller, and that's kind of not necessarily what I would do. I just don't. I I, I don't know what the the return could be because I'm not on the phone with other general managers at this time. But if you have a, a, a guy that's the age of DeBrusque 
and and has proven that he can score some goals at least in chunks. And Olmark, who's proven that he can he can carry a team for long stretches of of, of the time. Um, to me, that's got to generate some interest. I don't know what the yield is, but certainly they could help, they could use some help on the blue line, and they could use some help with some more scoring. Uh, debrusca has got like one goal in thirteen games, I think it is, and that's that's not that doesn't qualify to me as a top six forward. Although other people might assess him in a different fashion. Mike, as we approach the trade deadline, you are as well equipped as anybody on the planet to answer this. I would love to know who is the biggest shyster that you would talk to as a GM and that would, would not ever, you know, meet their, 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 their ask. And is there a trade that you were ever close to consummating that still haunts you that you were unable to get done? You know, I, I actually had a deal with uh, Neil Smith from the Rangers. Rangers. And it was Rangers Islanders, which would have been, and it was for Ziggy Palfi, who was a pretty big name at the time. And uh, it, it actually got squelched by the owner of the Islanders at the time, whose name was Milstein. He was the Fredo of ownership groups. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Milbury, it's great talking to you. I wish you were here with us in Florida, but I know you're enjoying the Cape. So, Well, uh, it'll, it'll warm up soon for me. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I had yeah. a martini in your honor last night. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Have another one tonight. Okay. She will. It'll <laughs> actually be this afternoon. Um, all right, Mike Milbury, thank you. All right, have a good one, guys. Enjoy Florida. All right, we are in Florida, 